Hi everyone, I'm Steve Main. Um, I want to give you a little background about myself before I talk about working your legs every day because that sounds crazy. And uh, 40 years ago, I would have thought it was crazy, you know. Um, so um, I own multiple health clubs. You can uh, check us out online uh, parkwayathleticclub.com or fitnessfor10.com and uh, you can see all the different programs and so on we have but I'm, I'm telling you that just to, to give you a little background about me I played college football college baseball so uh, I've been working out and exercising since I was a young teenager doing crazy stuff playing with my diet and now I'm still um, experimenting on myself and something I never would have thought that I would do or try or even think about was working a body part two days in a row because that's just you don't do that but now at my age I'm going how do I compensate I don't want to train with too high of an intensity level because I'm trying to protect my body uh, prevent injury because at my age injury will really set you back it, it can you know you hurt your back you could be doing nothing for months so i'm trying to just experiment with things <clears throat> and so what i'm doing for instance with my legs is i'll work them three days in a row not two days in a row three days in a row and i have uh, i'll go to the gym maybe one of those days and i'll do some uh squats or leg press, sissy squats, uh, I mean, hack squats, uh, and so on, deadlifts. But then maybe the other two days, uh, sandwiched around that, or two days after I go to the gym and I work my legs, I have kettlebells at home, dumbbells at home, steps. I have a block that I can do step-ups on, and that's what I do. I'll grab a couple light dumbbells, maybe 20 pounds, 25 pounds, and I'll do step-ups on maybe a 24 inch block. I'll do some lunges. I'll do some sumo deadlifts. I'll do some sumo squats. I'll do some dumbbell squats, but I'm not doing a lot. I'm doing in, in my intensity level is not very high. I couldn't even tell you how many reps I have left in the tank because it's a lot. I could do a lot more. So my intensity level is pretty low, but it's pretty low to moderate three days in a row, but I'm doing a lot of sets. So every time I walk by those dumbbells or that those kettlebells, I'll do a set. So throughout the day, I might do 10, 12 sets maybe some days on an exercise, but it's very low intensity. And I think my body's responding. So then I'll take four days off and I'll rest for four days with on that particular body part and i'm i'm kind of mixing it up with some of my other body parts biceps and so on maybe i do three sets a day five days a week on my biceps and it, it's light work and my body is responding why because it's something different it's something new but and i'm not recommending this for anyone my main point with this is that everyone is different and especially your body changes I started off in this business as a personal trainer. And now looking back, I see the biggest mistake that I made is I looked at everyone through the eyes of my own body. This is how I need to eat. So I projected that on a 65 year old. No, a 65 year old does not need to eat and shouldn't eat like a 25 year old. The macros are gonna be different. Everything's gonna be different. I know that now because of my age. I'm 60. So my body's different. I can't eat the way I ate when I was 25. What worked when I was 25 will not work. It will just destroy me. It would turn me into a diabetic in a week. I can't do it that way anymore. I do it a different way at my age now. So that's the, one of the biggest things I've learned is how much your body changes. 
and the needs and the benefits and so on, what stimulates your body are different than they were 40 years ago. And so now I look at, okay, what about another person? That person's completely different than me. Um, their diet needs to be dialed in for them. Their workout program needs to be dialed in for them. And they can't, a trainer can't figure that out for you overnight. It's going to take time to figure out what is your perfect diet and then how should you modify it temporarily? How, how, sh how many carbs should you eat? How much protein should you eat? What should, how many calories should you be at? And then should it always be that or should you modify it periodically once a month, once every other month? Should you do intermittent fasting? It, your body changes. And if my, I'm this much different after this many years, there is not one person out there that's exactly like me. So I can't tell them do exactly this. But that's my point with saying, hey, I'm trying working my legs three days in a row. I would have thought, I would have said, Steve, you are nuts. I would have said that to myself 40 years ago, 30 years ago. You cannot do that. That won't work. But you know what? My body's responding because it's something different and unique. And I am getting those four days rest. So my point with this is there's more than one beneficial way to do things. And maybe you don't always want to do the same thing all the time. Maybe you want to change it up because this way is I'm getting results and I feel good and my body feels good right now. I don't have any soreness or joint pain or anything, but should I continue to do it or should I change it up? So that's my big point with this is everyone's different. You need to make sure you guys have heard me. If you've been watching the channel, you've heard me say this lots of times. Your intensity level needs to match your recovery. If I was working my legs really hard and intense three days in a row, then I, I'm tearing down too much without time to build up. But I'm tearing down a little bit each day in those four days, my body is recovering. So it's okay to try new things. Am I recommending anything specifically? No. Like I would have when I first started being a personal trainer, I would have said, this is how you do have to do it. And this is what the science says. Oh, blah, blah. Baloney. Everyone's different. You got to find out for yourself. And when they do studies, why do they use a hundred people? If everyone was the same, one person would work. What if you're that one person where that study is not going to work for you? So thanks for listening to my little mini rant. We'll see you next time.